Hey guys, Trintendo here. Welcome to the channel. Subscribe to us, of course, and follow on Instagram if you can. It really helps. So today we're going to take apart my Joy-Cons and do a shell swap. But first I wanted to discuss the Metroid Red giveaway. So entries for the giveaway will run until the 25th of February. Uh, at that point, a winner will be selected, just like with the Pokemon Legends Arceus giveaway. Congratulations to Ijaz Khan, by the way. He won uh, the Pokemon Legends Arceus physical copy, and we have a picture of him receiving on our Instagram. The, well, basically, just like uh, Pokemon Arceus, what we want to do is for you to enter just hashtag Trintendo on this video, like and share this video, tell a friend, and comment as well because I'd love to hear your thoughts on, on today's video. So let's get started. I'm going to speed through the unscrewing process for most of the video. So anytime you see any unscrewing, it'll just be for the screws that you could visibly see. Uh, and we'll just get through it very quickly. So the most important thing is when doing this is to remove the battery. And also don't remove any cables that is not necessary to be removed. Keep them intact once they don't need to be removed and you'll see that in this video so when you remove the battery and you unscrew the middle plate you basically want to get the middle plate away from the joy con so you'll see there that the clamp was lifted and removed get rid of the l button to give you yourself a little bit of space we at this point you want to get the ribbon cables removed that you need removing so this it will be for the minus button and the l button get that cable out of its clamp and then that will give you some space to get at the thumbstick screws Get the clamp up for the Joy-Con thumbstick. Uh, pull the ribbon cable out. And then basically just, uh, after you get the ribbon cable out, just gently push the thumbstick through. Uh, this is not a tutorial, but it will get you acquainted with some of the uh, some of the things you need to do to pull this off successfully. So there, uh, we remove the screw fold in the minus button and the L button. When you get these screws off, uh, the ribbon cable should start to bend and stuff. Don't worry about that. It actually goes right back into place. No problem. Once you start to screw them back in, they actually go into place. We remove the padding. This padding is necessary to basically keep the thumbstick off the shell or rubbing on the shell uh, some people won't put it back on a new shell uh, sometimes it loses the adhesive but i recommend trying to put it back definitely so at this stage with all these things removed you pry the hg rumble up with your finger uh, your fingernails or you could use a pry tool and then you 
unscrew these last two screws here which is keeping the motherboard onto the shell try to keep your screws in place <laughs> not like me i've done this a lot of times so i don't really need to remember where they go but try to to keep track of where they go so we just lift up uh, get the HD rumble out of the spot and then just lift up No need to take apart the uh, uh, To take out the other ribbon cables I'll also speed through any of these uh, put in put in on the buttons on the other shells as well So at this point we just just how you removed the motherboard from the old shell You are basically placing this new motherboard on the new shell uh, it should go into place it will fit in place you you can tell when it is in place there's a little uh, a screw mount there that shapes to the to the motherboard once that's in place you should be good if you look at the middle plate you could see where there aren't any screw posts so that is where your first two screws should go on your motherboard so starting from the top right you're screwing the screw and then the other one will be at the bottom left this is just a nice guide uh, for you to know where the screws should go at this point because, I mean, if you're doing it for the first time, you could potentially forget, hey, should it be on the left, uh, on the left top or the right top? You, you could get confused. So use the middle plate as a guide. You want to get your thumbstick back in now at this point in the process and screw it in. Put in the, the thumbstick in now will allow you to get the L and minus button ribbon cable in easier. So you'll see now that when we we'll put the the thumbstick cable in now And then just take your time and clamp it down. Make sure and put all the rubber membranes back in. Because it's easy to forget. And then when the Joy-Con is all put together, you will have to <laughs> uh, disassemble the Joy-Con again. So as you can see, when you put any screws in here on this ribbon cable, it will fold automatically to the shell once you start screwing, right? So that button should face up to touch uh, basically when the L button comes down on it. So you'd see when you screw in it, it will it will go in automatically just a little shout out i fix it this is not a sponsored video but it's it's the tools that we use and they haven't failed us failed me at any point in time so keep that in mind if you need to get tools you put the uh, cable back in for the l and the minus button and clamp it down From here, you want to work on the middle plate. So this will be a little tricky if it's the first time you're doing it. You basically want to press down the back of the button. You'll hear a little click. And then you want to stick the pry tool as far in as you can and then push down. Make sure that when you're pushing down, it's facing the desk because the springs will fly out and you will lose them 
the springs go back onto these little knobs and then you put the button on so this is the button for the ZL you just switch them it's pretty simple straightforward this shouldn't give you any problems I mean the problems will come when you when you're trying to put the button back into place with the springs but the more you do it is the more it will become very easy to do once that's once it's tightened make sure it's it's tightened to the point where it's not moving at all Use your tweezers and get the spring into place. Put it back onto the little nubs. And then you align those springs with the nubs on the button. And then you just push down. You'd feel where you need to apply the force. And you'll push down. Of course, you can't actually see how to do it because there's no space for a camera to go but you'll get the idea when you have to do it you get the l button back into place use a pencil or a screwdriver just or, or the tweezer to just get a spring in there don't push it all the way but you'll see if it's straight just make sure it's straight Now we put the middle plate back on, but first we have to get the ribbon cable for the ZL back into its spot. Just make sure you move the Joy-Con around while working on, on it to, it'll, to make it a little more comfortable, no matter what you're doing. If you think moving the Joy-Con around will make it easier, do that. So when you get that in place, you basically, that cable there, you wanna make sure that cable is folded under the middle plate. It should not be at the side of the middle plate. It should be passing through that little, that space there. Where it is right now, that's where it should be. Get any cables, just move any cables, um, move any cables out of the way. But you'll see the, that ribbon cable for the ZL should be folded underneath the middle plate. Once that's in place, you just push down on it, make sure it's it's aligned properly. And then you start screwing in these three additional screws for the middle plate. It's important that you put all the screws back. It does keep the Joy-Con in place. So for instance, if you don't put all the screws back, there's a possibility that when you put any Joy-Con together, you might get bulge, like a little bulge. You could tell that the Joy-Con would be feeling fatter than another one. So you you, you don't want that. From here, we're just going to remove the back plate. We don't need to replace, well, I'm not replacing my SL and SR buttons. So if you wanted to do that, you would have to go another step and remove the ribbon cable. But for now, I'm just removing the back plate. You just remove the eject button from the last shell and then put it on to the new one and then put back your screw. I'll maybe do another video where I replace the SLSR buttons, but for this video, I mean, it's not that uh, important. 
so after doing all those uh, steps you want to get your battery back into place I suggest getting a plastic pencil a mechanical pencil to do this step once you get the battery in place you basically start from the top of the Joy-Con get it in its place and then work your way down and you should hear some snaps once you hear some snaps and it's looking it's looking together no spaces no lines then you're all good you can screw it screw it uh, back now from here you want to test some of the buttons just to make sure test the face button make sure it's lighting make sure it's the it, it's working sorry make sure the joy con is working i suggest testing the l button as well so when the light is stopped you just you test the zl the l and the sl and the sr so at least you know that it is functional on to the right joy con now so to me this is the this shell is nicer than the left joy con because it's more there's more detail you want to use a y00 driver here so anytime sometimes the HG ROM will get stuck into the, the back shell you just use a tweezer hold on to the HG rumble and then pull the back plate off shouldn't be much of a problem get the battery out again first thing and kind of move the sensor for the amiibo out the way so that it will make it easier for you to work get these three screws out and then you get to the difficult part of the ZR now getting it out isn't that difficult but getting it back in is a bit difficult but the more you do it it should become easier and second nature you get the thumbstick uh the thumbstick ribbon cable out and then we just basically remove it from the shell Remove the R button as well to give you a, uh, to give yourself a little bit of space to work. Remove the two screws you see here. Just like with the first one, you can use the middle plate to evaluate which screws you should be removing at any particular time. So for this, you lift up the motherboard. And then you stick a tweezer on the inside and you lift up this metal shielding. It is quite different from the left Joy-Con, but nothing to be too alarmed about. The HG Rumble is also adhered to the shell. There's an adhesive there. So it may not come out as easy as this came out because of obviously this was a, a custom shell that was put on. So when you're when you are doing when you are doing your own shell swap, just make sure and look out for that. You will have to use a little bit of force to remove the HG rumble. So 
so with the the new buttons back into place the make sure you put all the rubber membranes back on before you drop the motherboard back onto the new shell this should line up very easily as well there's the sensor there and then the HD rumble you'll see that the metal plate goes directly next to that screw hole there that screw mount so that's how you know it's in place it should be flat the motherboard should be flat use the middle plate to kind of see where you should be screwing so it's not the two top screws it's more the it's the two screws closer to the thumbstick is what you want to be screwing now And again, keep your screws organized. <laughs> it's not too hard for Joy-Cons because there's not that many screws. Maybe when I open up some consoles, it might be worse. So same thing like the left Joy-Con, just like the right Joy-Con. Stick button down and then shove the pry tool inside while it's facing down and then push down uh, it's it's not as <laughs> it's not always easy but just take your time and uh, use a little more force than you you think you should use and it should come off it'll be scary the first time but no worries, we have middle plates in case you break, <laughs> break the middle plate. We could replace it for you. Get the springs back on, on the, well, on the new, on the new shell. You want to align the springs that way. So for the ZR, just put it onto the new shell and then screw it on nothing too difficult there make sure the make sure it's tight and it's not moving get your screws back onto the knobs and then line them up with the knobs on the button itself and then just push down just press on it just to make sure it's actually acting like a button so you know it's it's in place if it's not acting like a button then obviously a spring came out a spring is not aligned or something like that We want to put the thumbstick back in first well after the motherboard the thumbstick is the next thing at least on this on this joy con on this right joy con once you have those screws in place you want to clamp it down make sure you do that because as i said you might if you forget that then you have to take apart the whole joy con again so Make sure the ribbon cable is in place and clamped. Do not push down on the ribbon cable. So like when it's already clamped, don't push the cable down or try to bend it or anything. Just leave it exactly how it was is there. So for the hardest part of this Joy-Con, uh, to get the ZR back into place, you want to line up the middle plate with the rest of the Joy-Con because that's like the final step so you want to prepare for that so you put in the R back in place as well make sure the spring is straight 
and then from here you want to put the middle plate over the Joy-Con right basically pretend like it's already mounted so I'll adjust the Joy-Con a little bit to show you all right so it's it's basically in side the Joy-Con like that and then you just look to the side and then put the cable back into the clamp into the into the uh, ribbon cable clamp you can't see it from here obviously but when you're doing it you'll know what is required and then just push the clamp down just try to keep the middle plate straight and just push the clamp down then drop it on You screw screw on these quickly put those screws on quickly and then get the sensor back in make sure you put it back where it should be there's some channels there make sure the cable is in there and it's around the loop because that will if that's not back in place the, the joy-con won't close properly and you don't want a, a fat Joy-Con. You want it just like all the other Joy-Cons, nice and slim. Get the button, get the battery cable back into place. Just use the pencil and push down on it. It will clamp in. You don't have to worry about using too much force or anything like that. You should hear two clicks then you put the battery back so at this point we're basically done um, the last step is just to remove the back plate as I said in the last for the last joycon you could remove the SLSR buttons but that's simple that's just to remove the other the, the screws on the rail and then you you put your button you switch your buttons and then you put back the uh, the, the uh, ribbon cable the board back onto the rail so for this you just switch the eject button and then put the new back plate on and screw it back you line up the front of the shell first get it in place and then drop it back on you should hear some clicks uh, even if you have to use a try not to use too much force I'm using a little force there because I know it should be lined up but try not to use too much force once everything is is back together then you're done screws and we're done so guys I really do hope you enjoyed this video um, we will have joy cons already shelled like these for sale uh, they will be sold at $900 uh, you could bring your Joy-Cons get a rebate so you could purchase them for four or five four or five hundred $500 once your Joy-Cons are in good shape so that's it for this video guys bye